double strokes are great. If you want to be a truly awesome drummer, you need to know how to play double strokes. But it's not enough to be able to play double strokes uh, in general. Like, we want them to sound really even in terms of spacing and volume. But if you don't even know what a double stroke is, what's a double stroke? What are double strokes? Double strokes. It's kind of getting... I mean, it's not kind of getting, it is getting two strokes with one motion. One flick of the wrist. And that allows drummers to play really fast with very little effort. Or snare drum. So how do? Well, they all rely on using rebound. So when I throw a stick down, Ideally, it bounces right back up, just like you're dribbling a basketball. And we can use that rebound to our advantage. We need to work with physics. That's the big thing here. We got to work with physics, not against physics. So we see that the stick naturally just wants to bounce. That's just gravity only. And it's bouncing a lot. So we can control that. So when a lot of drummers get started playing double strokes, they end up playing kind of kind of like this. Which is not that great. Sure, the sticks are bouncing and yeah, they're they're getting two strokes from one motion of the wrist, but the evenness is all wonky, you know, the second stroke is always quieter than the first one, the spacing is really inconsistent, and a lot of that unevenness stems from drummers not using their back fingers as well as they could. Sure, we could play double strokes without using our back fingers on the sticks at all. But I feel like I have practically no control over the sticks. I'm unable to control the spacing between the strokes or the volume of the second stroke especially. We can change our technique to have better control over all of that. So a lot of times drummers focus on their main fulcrum or the pivot point that's created by pinching the stick between your thumb and either your index finger or some drummers uh, pinch between thumb and middle finger or even between thumb and index finger and middle finger all at once. But either way, that pinch creates this pivot point. So the stick can rotate between my thumb and finger. Now, if I squeeze the stick too hard, it's not gonna rotate. And then obviously, if I don't squeeze hard enough, you lose it. The back three fingers do a lot to really support and control the stick as it moves and pivots around the fulcrum. But getting these back fingers to participate in the movements takes quite a bit of practice and might feel sort of strange at first. So this little exercise is quite simple, and we're going to start by just removing our front fulcrum. So taking the thumb and index finger totally off the stick and just cradling the stick using the back three fingers to hold it in your hand. Now, I'm not squeezing with my back fingers. I'm not clenching them. They're pretty, they're pretty loose, they're just kind of hanging out there, and the stick is really held in my hand by the leverage of the butt of the stick uh, resting against my palm. Try to get some good angles here. Oh yeah. So very, very loose, very relaxed. And you'll want to keep your palms almost flat to the floor. You don't want to have your hands to the side doing this sort of finger gun thing. Pachoo, pachoo. All I'm gonna do is I'm going to open my back fingers and drop the stick and then scoop it back up using only the back three fingers like this. Just a little drop and scoop. And I want to hit only one time. And it's not going to be loud, it'll be pretty quiet. We're pretty much letting gravity do its thing, and our fingers are just a guidance system. But you see my fingers are just opening and closing. So take a few minutes just dropping the sticks, and scooping them up with only the back fingers, and make sure you aren't lifting your wrist. I'm not 
doing this type of thing. You know, I'm not really lifting the stick at all. It's just a little drop and a little catch. And of course, do it with your left hand as well. And you'll very likely drop the sticks a whole bunch of times as you're getting the feel for this, and that's okay. When you feel like you got that drop scoop mechanic down with each hand, try alternating a little bit. Next, we want to get the fulcrum back on the stick. So start by cradling, just like before. Then we get our little pinch back on here. And now we're going to try the same exact movements again. So just opening the back fingers, dropping the stick, and then scooping it up. But now that we have our fulcrum, or this other pivot point, we should get two strokes from the same exact motions, like this. or with the left hand. And I'm really not doing anything differently. It's just now this pivot point allows us to get two strokes. And you could see my fingers open and close, and they sort of follow the movement of the stick. And the second stroke really comes from scooping the stick back up with the back fingers. And this offers many advantages over just pinching and hoping for the best. The back fingers entirely control the spacing between each stroke and the volume of the second stroke. Whereas if we just sort of pinch and don't use our back fingers at all, the spacing is going to be all over the place and the second stroke is always quieter than the first one since all of the momentum from our wrist movement goes into the first stroke and then the second stroke is just kind of like whatever's left over. So right now everything is still pretty quiet because we're just dropping the stick and catching it. So gravity is doing most of the work for us. But all we need to do to get more volume is put a little bit more throw into the first stroke. So just lifting the stick a bit higher and throwing it. I'm not drilling down into the surface. My hand is almost moving past the point of where the stick hits. So if I allow the stick to bounce up after the first stroke, you see my fingers are kind of open. In this case, the, the stick sort of overshot. But all I would need to do is close the back fingers to get the second stroke. Same with the left hand. And then it's just a matter of cranking up the speed very gradually. or on the snare drum. And you'll notice all of my fingers are always in contact with the stick. And the pinky, especially, gets very overlooked. I see so many drummers keeping their pinkies off the sticks. Don't do that. The pinky actually has the most leverage over the stick out of any of your other fingers because it's the furthest away from the fulcrum. It's the furthest from the pivot point. So even though it's kind of the weakest finger, it arguably has the most influence over the direction of the stick. And we want the sticks to move in as straight a line as possible, since the shortest distance between any two points is a straight line. So if your sticks are making figure eights in the air, you're just going to work way harder than you actually need to. Quick little recap. So we want to start with no fulcrum, just cradling the stick with the back fingers. We want to drop and scoop. Very quiet, just like that. And then we get the fulcrum back on and try the drop scoop again. 
but now it should be two strokes. And then we want to put a little bit more throw into it. And then really focus on using those back fingers to snap back in for the second stroke. And try implementing this technique at a wider range of volumes, particularly ghost notes. That's where this stuff is really, really helpful. Because if we want to play fast and quietly, we really need to use small movements. So this little drop catch with the left hand, it's the perfect tool for the job. As you build up confidence using this technique, make sure that you implement it with other patterns that include double strokes, particularly single paradiddles, double paradiddles, and paradiddle diddles. And of course, short roll combinations like five stroke rolls, seven stroke rolls, nine stroke rolls. They're all very, very functional and really come to life when you can play them at a wide range of speeds and volumes. If you like what you saw in this video, check out my Patreon page. Your support grants you access to transcriptions for all my lesson videos and also grants you access to some practice loops that I have available. Make sure you follow me on Instagram to see more videos of my playing at drummerhar and follow me on Twitch at twitch.tv slash drummerhar where I do all kinds of weird experimental stuff with an electronic kit. It's a lot of fun. Do all the stuff. Um... And uh, practice. Practice a lot and practice smart. Work with physics. Don't hurt yourself. Be a good person. Yeah, I think that's it. I think that's it. This one wasn't scripted. You Could you tell that this one wasn't scripted? Could you? Could you? Because I could tell. Oh, God, this was hard.